modest beginnings start with the single blow of a horn, man. Now, when you get through with this thing, every dickhead in the world is going to want to own it. Do you know anything at all about the internal combustion engine? Gentlemen, what we've got here is a bunch of broke sword dicks. Let's see what we have underneath the cabinets today. This case is in good shape though, all things considered. Been so long since this thing come in here, I don't know what the story is with it. it looks like a two. Hmm. Hmm. I think this originally was a two by six, and somebody turned it into a two by eight. And we are missing some transistors. Let me change our angle here. So. That's definitely what we've got going on here. This was a two by six, it looks like originally. And somebody tried to up convert it. it looks like they didn't have any problems with it successfully. Um, the only problem is that this is too short and that's too small. This is some aftermarket preamp, which we'll test. This is definitely a two drive in eight. Now, I'm not a big fan of this power wire system that's in here, so that means we're gonna change that. And I think our old combiner was probably here at one point. They didn't bother to clean off any of the hot glue or any of the, the fluffy duff. And they didn't bother to make sure all the coaxes were the same length. Because there's no way that this length of coax here that goes to here is the same length of this piece of coax that goes to here. So it means our times are all messed up. And then the other thing I see is that the coax on the output side, there's no way this length of coax here is the same length that comes around and goes here. And we don't like these, we don't like this, we don't like this. I'm not liking this, 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 or this. Um, not enough of this. Too small of these. Too short of this. Basically, um, this is gonna be a board off overhaul. All right, good times at band camp. Just like the first time I got to make uh, make my fingers smell like fish. Okay, let's uh, let's start the strip down process. And for us to upgrade, upgrade the power wires, I got to take the board out, which is a couple hours worth of work or an hour and a half worth of work. Take the board out and drill the holes and all that stuff. So first things first, we're going to come through and we'll rip these last three Toshibas that are in here out because I'm not going to 200. 400, 600, 800 thousand dollars. Not worth it. So we're going to backfill this with HGs eventually. And um, needs a bath. I think a lot of the schmutz will come off. Yeah, we'll make her look pretty. All right, I'm going to go play. See this little capacitor is here. Oh, yes. It's this little cap that's right here. It's not nearly big enough to do the job. This thing can get a couple good heats on it, and that cap would break down. Our 12 volt would dump back to our input circuit and wipe out the transistors. So we're going to change all of those while we're here. 
Of course, we've got to make it look all pretty on the inside. We've got to love on our little girl. we got to make her look just the way she's supposed to be. Yeah, we're going to do the full money to this. We're going to put metal clads in it. Whole nine yards. See, it makes no sense. If you look at this thing with my eyes, I'll explain to you what I see here since I get this last little power wire jumper. Come on. Thank you. It's rubber wire. We can't, that can't stay either. It's rubber wire. It's got to go. gotta go for sure okay I'm gonna look at this with my pair of eyes that I have we're gonna zoom in here so we have one power wire feeding this distribution bus here there's no crossover links between the two distribution buses so this one power wire is feeding this two pill section, which is great. That means this two pill section here isn't starving. But in turn, we've got a power wire here and a power wire here, and that's it for all eight of these transistors. Now in theory, we can run four transistors off one of these wires and then another off of this one, but this wire is in the wrong place. So this whole end of the amp is getting more current then this end of the amp, it's almost starving all the way out here on the very end for uh, current distribution. What I don't get is strapped, strapped, unstrapped, and obviously the rest of this was unstrapped as well. That don't make no sense. All we found that this is good for you guys, by the way, strapping the top of transistors, after measuring this a lot, um, I used to do that on a bunch of boxes because I thought that's what we were supposed to do to help get more current to the transistors. There's a few amplifiers that are out there. There's rules to this exception, okay? There's, there's exceptions to this rule. <sighs> Dyslexia is kicking in hard today. This style of amplifier, we have to look at the whole sum area. Let's talk about just this here. So this whole sum area is ground, ground reference, okay? There's no traces fettering the current flow in between each one of the pill pockets on both sides. Nothing. Now, that being said, we're going to go look at Messenger and Texas Star. Messenger's boards, the way they're laid out, the transistors are so closely stacked together that there's no way to get sufficient amount of ground potential for the transistors to pull electrons from or pass to, however you want to look at it, so not technically current flows from positive and negative, but there's not enough ground potential because all the trace patterns and shit they have around their transistors in the pill pockets, that's the reason they've got that, and it's not a piece of copper. It is not. It is a paper thin piece of phenolic. It's the same stuff this board's made out of. There's a little tiny, tiny paper thin sheet of fiberglass in between two very micro pubic hair thin sheets of copper. Okay, that's a good and a bad because it carries the current and allows there to be less heat retention. That's the reason they did that. So when guys come back and they take pure copper and they strap over the top of the transistors, all that does, it helps the ground distribution. But in a box like this, all it does is hold current to the, or hold heat to the top of the transistor. This little piece of wire, it's gonna get just as hot as the transistor, but now it's got a metal mass on top of the ceramic cap that's holding heat. It's not helping deliver any more current. You're not going to be able to get any more current. You're only talking about, what, 10 amps? Max saturation, each component pulls, what, 20, 22, 24 amps each transistor? So each one of these pill, each one of the spaces in between the, the transistors has got to let a total of 20 amps pass to it. Okay, remember, we're splitting that in half. 
So it's about 10 amps per leg on the transistor that it's summing up from ground or passing to ground, however you want to think about it. Um, Think how small the traces have to be in the satellite area to start restricting that, that amount of current. Now, that's good. The two-pill driver section heat sink comes all the way out to here. That's freaking great. But we wouldn't get away with that today in today's X-Force, the blue label. So this is a Carl built box, obviously. That's the exception to the rule. There's messengers and some Texas stars. The Texas star board is not the greatest in the world but they've been out there running for decades and decades and decades. And so has the messenger. The messenger's been around for decades and decades and decades and decades, okay? Now that I finally got to meet the actual people that, uh, some of the people that owned and operated messenger way back in the day, I can guarantee you this. If somebody ever tells you that they worked there or they had something to do with it or that they're most likely lying. Because everybody that was working at Messenger way back in the day went on to have incredibly successful electrical engineer careers like Apple and IBM and those kind of things. And that's really all I should say about it. Those people asked me to keep their respect their privacy, but I heard a rumor that there's a guy that's in Nevada that works out of a bread truck and he I mean he said this to me I stopped in there and seen him one day <laughs> he doesn't he didn't know who I was he knows who I am now but he didn't know who I was was then and he he proceeded to tell me that story and I gotta say man this is straight up a lie but it is what it is people say anything they can to get attention instead of actually doing it and letting their work speak for them some some people will they just will but there's more than ample amount of surface area for us to be able to pass 20 amps worth of current in between each one of the transistors. More than ample. More than ample. So we don't need to worry about strapping the top of the transistors. Now on the messenger amps, yes, because that's the only summed area that they could come up with with us bringing ground potential. Um, when I go back and I redo messengers, you guys have all seen me do this in probably the last 200 plus messenger boxes I've managed to rework or had here to rework. I'll take that bar and I'll bend it up. And I'll take that phenolic and I'll bend it up so there's a little tiny, tiny air gap on top of the transistor that allows air to move around. That's all it takes, just a little tiny air gap, like about the thickness of a toothpick. And we don't see heat transference that way. It reduces it. So, Now on the blue label boxes, You'll find that the heat sink will start right here at the edge of the transistor and end right here at the end of the transistor. So you've got this little like one and a quarter inch wide strip of heat sink to get rid of the heat of the transistors operating. Well this is, comes all the way back to here, right at the edge of this pill pocket, right, right there. Which is good. You've got all this amount of heat sink to dissipate the heat from the driver's section. So in theory you don't really have to ever worry about the driver's section overheating and giving us a bad hair day. Now the downside is, we have to remember that air is like a lot of different things in this world, including people, will always follow the path of least resistance. So if we think about it for a minute, we have two fans blowing into this cabinet, down, constantly, 24-7, as this box is running. Is it going to go down and out the obstructed area on this side of the box because the heat sink on this thing comes all the way back to here? Is it going to run down here? Or are we going to lose a bunch of that air pressure? It should be funneled over this, this set of heat sink fins down this side and down the middle. Because remember, we're going to have our hunky heat sink, our hunky heat sink, and they're going to be butted up like this. So we've got an air gap on this side of the heat sink. We've got the air gap that goes down the middle and another air gap that goes down the side. So if one heat sink is only this long and the other one's this long, how do you think the air is going to leave the cabinet? In, out. I mean, some's going to flow over this, but most of it's going to pour out this side. So what we'll do to help overcome that is one will block off this area with a little bit more wire. 
but we're going to create a little phenolic block that's in there to stop the air from trying to run down the middle. Then the other thing we're going to do is we're going to put a canid. <sighs> Phone hasn't stopped ringing all morning. We're going to put a canid louver in here. So we're going to put a little block in here to push air to this side. And what that does is it's going to cause restriction to balance out the airflow over here. So it's going to help push more air across the output section versus letting it all run out the driver's side, which has got little to no resistance. So it's pretty simple. We'll just take a piece of aluminum, cut it to set it on the floor. We'll hold it down with some aluminized tape and it's going to help duck the air. Well, the way the air is going to see it is the air collimates and it's going to back up against this port create a higher pressure behind the driver section which is going to have the final section have a lower pressure behind it so the air is going to want to naturally move this direction but we don't want to block this completely off so we'll probably come out to about here or so about like right there underneath the board so we can help push more air out this side because that's where the heat needs to be or the air needs to be so this last couple of transistors the amount of air that's moving across the heat sink isn't super saturated with heat and these two transistors on the end of the heat sink can get out ad of adequate cooling okay um i gotta start breaking this down to take it up okay so we got our new power wire holes drilled let me lift this up and show you what i'm talking about underneath here so Here's the bottom side of this amp. And you see the distance, the length difference between, I mean, that is a massive amount of heat sink underneath that driver section. Oh, shut up, phone. All day long today. That is a, a massive amount of heat sink for that one little tiny driver. Focus where I'm pointing. Thank you, camera. So we're gonna add more power wire to this thing. And then we're gonna add a baffle. A baffle. That'll come off the edge of the heat sink here. And it's gonna hook back to about this far. And the whole goal is not to pinch this off completely, but to reduce our airflow just a little bit so we can increase the volume of air that goes down this side of the amplifier just a little bit not a lot just a little bit so let me uh get on to fabric cobble and that and then we'll be back we'll drop some new power wires in this thing and the way this will set up is we'll have two wires we'll have two wires coming out here two coming out here and one coming out here i think it'll work out just perfectly okay i'll have to go fight with my phone some more The gate of me and Motor Mouth talking earlier today. Is us talking on the bowl. This goes on for 40 minutes like this. Twenty minutes or whatever it was. Um, 
You said bulbous. Bulbous. It just sounds dirty. Bulbous. Bulbous. You son of a doo diddly fart snock snatch sloppy butthole corn looking communist cock freaking son of a Close now. This is on six, by the way. So, did our power wire upgrade, obviously. Got everything pinned down underneath so we don't have to worry about the power wire somehow sneaking up underneath one of the heat sinks, obviously. We're still coming out of our stock locations in the back, obviously. So, I gotta pay attention to time because I gotta go get dinner. Okay, I gotta leave here in just a couple minutes. So let's do this up here real quick. All down through the hall. She's feeling so slow. And away we go. Come on, come on, wire. Come on, there we go. Okay. No, we down flat. No, cross over each other like that. There we go. Flat. really cool is I see another builders start doing this with their power leads. They're all bragging about, look at how pretty that is. Like, yep, I know. I tell them all the same thing. Good job. 
Yo copy YouTube. Okay. Yeah, because like I was the first one to ever braid power wire. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Although in certain circumstances you don't want to braid the power wire, but this is not one of them. Oh, quit being a little snit. Come here. We're almost done. Trust me, you'll have something to look at here in a minute. Chill out. Nobody click off the off the video because you're bored because BBI is not entertaining you. Almost done. Oh, no. Oh, I screwed up. Hold on. Let's see what I do wrong here. That's got to go over there. Right goes over the left and then you angle it to the dangle. For the heat of the meat times the mass of the ass equals the motion of the ocean. And that makes a scream. It screams of goodness. Okay, on to the next step. Okay, so I just, I'm back by the way. It's Monday now and uh, it's time to get back on this little box and get it wrapped up. So I came and I'm started now and I pulled these last three transistors that were in here. I took them out and this transistor that came out, the top popped off of it, which is normal sometimes from heating issues and stuff. The glue breaks down on the top of the transistor, but I was like, what in the heck is in this transistor's guts? Like what's inside of it? So first let me run the test because the transistor is really delicate. Now it's got a gain of 14. When I first pulled it out, it had a gain of zero. Check this out. This is gonna blow your mind. Let me come down in on that. That's JB Weld. They glued the lid of the transistor on with JB Weld. So this whole transistor all of this part here, and I don't want to touch this because the transistor is still good. All of this here is JB Weld. All this gray is JB Weld. I've never seen this before. Somebody, this top popped off this transistor, and with the skill of a Jedi Knight, they got in there and upchucked out of the man muscle um, <clears throat> some JB Weld semened and got the lid to stick back on. That's impressive. I mean, that's impressive. I have no idea what the condition of these other couple of transistors are. I'm gonna check them later, but I was like, holy smokes. I ain't never seen nothing like that. <laughs> and no, it's glue, it comes out onto the tabs. This isn't, uh, if you'll notice the body of the transistor, so you have your cap, and then you have your ceramic base. And on the real 2879s, this ceramic base, you can see is just slightly less opaque. It's a little bit more towards the clear side. This is a solid ceramic cap. This is some other substrate. That isn't because the metal's ripped off. That's literally JB Weld glue that's on there. That's something new every day. Every day. Well, let's get over here. And I'm going to come through. i got to clean out all the pill pockets, get all the schmoo out of them and stuff. And then um, I'm going to put HGs in here. And then we're gonna get them soldered down and everything fixed in here and then we're gonna give this thing a bath we're gonna clean her up make her look pretty she might not be the newest girl at the dance but when we're done she got to turn some heads yes sir so I took the relay out I got all the parts out that I want to replace I soldered down all of our transistors after thoroughly cleaning and resizing the pill pockets for the HGs. Um, the output combiner, when I went to take the resistors off, 
I don't know what it was held in there with. I think it was Unicorn Dreams and Angel's Wishes. It came right off, so I went ahead and I re-glued the output transformer back in, the combiner. And then I washed it. And I made it pretty. She's a pretty girl again. She's all shiny and clean. It's the cleanest this copper's ever gonna get. Okay. When we re-clear this, it's gonna be just like glass. It'll look perfect again. It happens when we wash it. But all the nasty solder work, all the flux, all the dirt, all the little solder bits, all of that stuff is now gone. See what I'm saying? The solder work is clean and pretty. And it gives us something stable to work on. You get so much smutch and shit and just little hunks of garbage that are caught up in the flux and all the other little sticky substances that are around the transistors from being changed in and out several times that we have to come back and re-hit it. Now I want to cover something. I took this piece of coax here off and this is the piece of coax that went from here around and was hooked up over here. Okay, what I wanted to show you was this. It's the same electrical length and the leads are the same. So we can go ahead and reuse this. I thought for sure looking at it that it would be shorter. It is not. The other thing I did is while having this apart, I went ahead, like I said, I removed the relay. One, to protect the case because when I wash it, it has a tendency to opaque these kinds of plastics. But two, so I could take it apart and clean the contacts on it. Now we did remove our preamp circuit that was in this thing. Take a pumice stone on my fingers, you're getting a little, a little calloused. Um, I did remove the little aftermarket Hemi Majibi preamp that was in this thing. I'll go ahead and I'll put body plugs up here in the front. I'll reattach our positive lead and we'll recertify all this works. This is a straight AM ass kicking box. That's what we're shooting for. I don't know why we would go through all the hassle of having a board cut and then stack all the components on the outside makes no sense to me. I don't know if they couldn't figure out where to put the parts or, but this is not up to my standards, so it can't be in here. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is the amp tells us a story. You know how I spent the first portion of this vajejo um, talking about airflow and how important it is that we block off part of this over here? so we can funnel more air across the heat sink over here. I want you to look at the copper. Now that it's all clean, this is pristine, and then we get into a heat soak area. And see how the copper is darker around our heat sink? That's bad. At some point or another, this amp has been cooked. I mean, it has just, it gets hot. The heat passes down into the heat sink, then passes back up into the board, and it discolors the heat sink or the copper. If we were to take the heat sink off and look at the bottom side of the board, you would see that the, the underside of this fiberglass phenolic is just a little bit whiter. And what causes that little bit of whiting is the heat dissipation, and then the metals, we'll say the phone is the metal and my hand is the phenolic starts to come away just a hair in the epoxy and it's just from heat separation it doesn't hurt anything it won't hurt the operation of the box but the overall point is is that our air path the reason that we cut this down to about here is to force more air across these components and out the cabinet you see how that works now that I've pointed it out, you can't help but see it. This is not dirt. This is heat treated copper on the phenolic from the heat from underneath. All right, well, now things are gonna start going very fast. When we come back, the relay is gonna be reinstalled, power wire is gonna be all hooked back up, input and output is gonna be all hooked back up. Um, our power wires are gonna be in. I'll probably have flybacks in at that point and um, this will all be hooked back up 
and we'll probably just be getting ready to come over here and change our output inductor which needs to be shorter for a three port but for a four port we need almost another full turn almost another full turn shall return God, my phone. Last two days. Oh, Jesus. Okay, so we're on the home stretch of this thing. Already hooked it up. It makes great power. It's running real smooth, quiet. It's happy. It's happy. And I couldn't help but notice that the input here was soldered in by a two year old or not soldered, but hot glued in by a two-year-old. Now, I've covered in many Vajayos why we hot glue these in place. And it's because the hot glue is flexible. This circuit, we want to have it be able to move a little bit. Not a lot, but just a little bit. Because the cabinet flexes, the board flexes. Everything around it moves. So, We use hot glue. I've tried two-part epoxy. I've tried JB Weld. I've tried everything you can think of. JB Weld's two-part epoxy, I know. I've tried everything that you can think of. And honestly, industrial, and not the hobby craft, hobby barn, hobby lobby, your wife's hot glue. Industrial hot glue, which melts at a higher temperature and has a higher, what would be a fancy word to call it? Stickum, stick, sticknonium, um, stick, stick rate has a it has a higher gription. Okay. Oh 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 oh. Oh, I got stringers. I got stringers. Okay, we'll let this set up. I got fuzzies. I got hot glue fuzzies. Okay, we're going to let this set up and um, let's make it make a couple thousand watts of power. What do you think? down there, Kingpin. I so said, what are you doing down there around the Great Shaky? Kingpin around California. You know who said this? Your friend way back up in the cut in Idaho got down. Come down. 
wanted Norris. I should have known who it was. Hey, I'm going to make you, uh, Just relaxing, man. Give me a big Maybe once, uh, sooner than later? I don't know. We'll see. If, if I got conditions, if conditions will let me, we'll stay up. Tempo? I don't, I don't think Mother Nature's got that much to do with it at this point. I think you're putting a, the grandma seizure on Mother Nature there, Kingpin. I got Lumberjack in the background. I hear a bunch of other people trying to hoop and holler. But you're bumping right up on in here, man. I've just been sitting here listening for the last two hours. Two straight hours of the Danielson talk show. I want to get that boy a bigger amplifier. I really do. Like, he needs one of them 3,000s. He's something like that. What he needs. But I've been sitting there listening to that talk show, and he's had everybody from 63 to... Man, if they could get that getaway driver out of the grave, they'd probably have him yelling at him, too. Mr. Kingpin. Making Mother Nature going north and south. Old friend in the corner with his giant piece of steel. Got down. Yeah, man, I feel you. I was just sitting down here. I didn't even know Skip was rolling. I sort of swing that beam around. And you're right, I did. I heard uh, a little bit of Daniel Sun in there. And then I rolled on up north. Hey, I bet you have your BB. This is out of uh, Washington. Hey, BBI with triple seven waving that We're gonna go ahead and park it here for a minute. The uh, he needs uh, he needs a uh, he needs a uh, BBI Bill three thousand. Come on. No, oh, I think he needs a skull cracker. One of us, one of us will build him something. I can almost guarantee that. Oh, triple seven. I heard you in there real quick. It's real weird, man. It's like Mother Nature. Your 40 dB is one key. And as you're talking, it just kind of fluctuates between 40 and 10, and back to 20, and then back down to 10, then up to 40 again. When you come down to 10, 777 popped in there and says, Oh, BBI. I was like, Okay. So I just sat here and I, you know, rolled the wave and just kind of waited for a hot second. Yeah, you pop right back up to 40 again. And that thing is running smooth. I hope you're having fun with it. It sure sounds like it when you talk. tell me about all the skipper shooting, break. Well, there ain't no doubt. There ain't no doubt, man. I, I don't know of uh, any of the 3,000s that are, that are doing the numbers I'm doing. Especially uh, my great number, sir. I haven't uh, been able to get uh, like long key down times like right here right now. Um, that just tells me I need to get my thermometers and my temperature sensors and everything else going. Uh, We don't have to worry about the air temperature too awful bad. Just kind of like feel the exhaust coming out of the vent. And no, you guys got to remember, the tube is inside of a cabinet inside of another cabinet. The overall cabinet vent, just feel the, the exhaust air coming out of that. I think it's a little too warm back out of it, man. Just what you got to do to break the tube in a little bit. You got to stand on it. Now stand tall with your head up on your shoulders, Kingpin. Aw, oh, man, there's lots of boxes out there making those kind of watts. You're just tickled pink because it's yours, and I understand. Now, I don't know very many others that'll make 9,000 bird with only a four-pill driver. But I know my teachers will, because I build like him. So there's a few of them out there, that's for sure. <laughs> he kicked it. You can't go too far down that rabbit hole, homeboy.
Just got to take it easy, right on the cusp of the drain. 410? DBI, I got that hammer down. Yeah, I hear that, man. Yeah, I hear that. I'm having a, I'm having a hell of a good time. More fun uh, with the hobby than I've had in uh, a long time. Ever since probably my first year that I got into it. Yeah, man, it's fun. Real fun. Laying the hamper down. Trying to lay the hand. So now the trick is, can we get buzzard? To, you know, get out of the mobile mentality. We were talking about this the other night. You know, <clears throat> you slow down and you speak with purpose. I mean, I, I don't know about you, I've always found it funny. The guys that come into Mobile and they get themselves on a little bit of a dominant base and they talk fast. And you're like, whoa, dude. Pump the brakes. Take a breath. Here's your balls back. Calm down. <laughs> ah, he'll come along. Greg's a good guy. He's another one that's come a long ways here in just a short time up here in the corner for sure. But it sounds like we're going to have an arms race over who's got the biggest antenna in the corner. I've seen a pretty flamboyant post here tonight, and I'm thinking, hmm. and when I change my tower out here in a month or so, I should be thinking about stretching my beam out a little bit more. Maybe go for eight on 70 foot, I don't know. This little BBI built beam's talking, I know that much. Mr. Kingpin, your friend way up here in the corner, talking to another BBI built station down in California. Mr. Kingpin and himself, I put a wave at you. Don't know the power of the dark side. Slow cruising it on low watts, big power got down. <laughs> this now? Every once in a while, even a blind squirrel finds a nut. It is what it is, and I'm loving every minute of it. Maybe uh, you're a little better down south in reading your mail. I thought I'd so good there. I wanted to see who was behind you. You come up off the mall. I could hear a bunch of people in your background all squeaking around behind you, but yeah, man, you've been holding it all on your own. Talking on this crappy mother nature we got. Oh boy, it's the middle of the night. It's way late in the evening. I don't need to be out here doing this. I just want to hear what that radio sounds like. Now you got all the bugs worked out of it. It sounds like it's working just fine. Mr. Kingpin, I appreciate you, my friend. You'd be good. I think I heard Daniel's son out there, too, running around in the background. But he wasn't holding it on his own. So I'll put the wave at you, Mr. Daniel's son. Good job on your talk show this evening. You have been the station to come to all evening. I know I've been sitting here listening to it. Mr. Kingpin, I appreciate you, brother. You be good. Keep mentoring your neighbors around you. Keep changing radio to be a better place for all of us. Because that's the only way we're going to survive. Gentlemen, my name is BBI. And without a shadow of a doubt, I am the biggest mud duck in Idaho. I'll see you, gentlemen. Click, click, click. Don't know the power of the dark side. And I will not key again. I'll see you, Kingpin. I'm 10 7. Okay. You mean to tell me I'll get a chance to get my receipt back? I've seen things coming now. You come over to the top and I'll put it back to you. 105, I'll see you, my friend. I am 10 7. Bye, bye, bye. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I see you. Hey, BBI, I just wanted to say I appreciate you. Dennis Son, Tucson. Thank you very much. You keep doing your job down there, Danielson. You're leading the way.
I'm proud of y'all. See ya. Click, click, click. Bait, bait, bait. Good night. Okay. We're done. We're finally at the tail end of the story. I want to go do fans. And I go over to my, my tub full of fans and it's completely empty. I'm like, son of a bitch. I didn't think I was completely out of fans, but the two fans that were in this thing were garbage. I mean, they were nice, but they weren't matched. So that means they didn't do the even amount of airflow that we need to get from both fans. And um, so I just opted to replace both the fans. So all new power wires, new power distribution, all new output transistors in the output section, um, all new matched metal based caps on the inside. Reworked the final combiner stage by a lot. Like I said, metal, metal clad caps on the outputs down here. Um, cleaned up all of our solder work. Redid our input, redid our output, removed that nasty ass preamp that was in here. So let's go over here and let's go play. Let's get our meters set up. So we're on 1x MPEP. So the full deflection on the right here on this meter is going to be 1,000 watts. That's 1,000 on average. A 5 watt slug in reverse, back from the bird 10,000 watt dummy load. Let's do this. Hello, audio one, two. Hello, hello. There's our 25, 25, uh, 20, 25 ish watts. Let's go up here. We're going to show our ability to talk through the box. Hello, one, two, one, two, one, two. Nice and low. Come back over here. Hello. All right. A variable all the way open. Putting a two watt carrier into it. Turn on the two by eight. The two watt carrier in gets us a 180 watt carrier out. Hello. And six over 600 bird modulated. So let's go find out where that top number's at. We're gonna go to two X. And we're on 14 volts at the moment, just cruising. So remember, we're putting about 20, 25 watts. This is a low drive box, you guys. Hello, one, two, right out about 2,000 watts, about 600 bird. Okay, so now that we know what it's doing there. We're going to save this. We're going to come back to this. This is the 2950. So let's hook up the derail. Derail radio. Let's see what's the max amount of bird that we're going to get out of this thing. On the hot rod, zooped up, stupid expensive Cobra 29. Turn the 2 by 8 off. Hello. Let's tighten on back up in here again. We're down on 1x again. Hello. Same about 20 watts worth of power. Remember, we're not going to see the same peak numbers. This radio doesn't do it, but we're going to see a whole lot more bird. Hello. Thousand bird. Hello. 900 birds somewhere in there. Translation, amp is talking. I mean, it is talking. So let's go ahead and we'll disconnect the derail radio again. We're going to hook back up the 2950. We're going to bring this back home. We'll go back around the other direction. Let's see what we've got for an input tune. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, 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 hello. I'm a happy clam. Just for the record. Hello. There's a reason that we suggest a 200 amp power supply. For a 2x8. This is an average reading meter. 
doesn't respond that quickly this little guy here so we're seeing around 175 to 180 amps oh heck i can't help myself let's reach down here and let's grab the power supply knob <sighs> We'll come on up to about 15 and a half volts. Let's see what this does now. Hello. Off the scale. Go down to 5x. Hello. 2300 watts of power. No problem. Hello. Fair enough. We'll call that tested. I'm gonna live with that. We're gonna walk away with a smile on her face. So she was a ratty old bitch when she come in here. And she was just like a hot girl. You know, hot girls require a lot more work. They do. It takes them three hours to get ready in the bathroom to go anywhere. When you go someplace, Lord help you if they get dirty or their hair gets messed up or it's windy outside or they're constantly retouching their makeup. Hot girls are a lot of work. She come in here is a dirty old girl but she's walking out of here a fairly hot chick so two new fans all put together ready to rock and roll let me slam the lid on this thing and we'll wrap this sucker up One more. We'll call her done. One, 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 oh. Well, for the record, I can feel more air coming out of this side than I can this side. Which is what we wanted. Well, gentlemen, that's all she wrote. This girl is done. Done and done. Little X-Force 2x8 completed. And I got about a billion things going on over here right now. I probably had a hundred phone calls so far this afternoon. It's now 4.30 in the afternoon. I got to sit down and finish editing this video. I would have got this done this morning, but the phone kept me occupied. So everybody has been sitting around all day with bated breath waiting for me to finish this so you guys can get on it because I put a big post up on Facebook. I got a couple hundred likes or whatever it was. Um, Sorry, it's because of the, ph the phone. It's because of the phone. Um, the other thing is I can no longer accept friends on Facebook. I am maxed out. I've got 499 friends. Or 4,999 4, friends. Prime example, phone's ringing. <clears throat> Once you click on that 500 or 5,000 mark, they won't let you have any more friends. So I appreciate you guys trying to follow along on Facebook. There's a lot of you. I think there's three or 400 of you that are in the the queue to accept your friends, you know, for me to accept you. And I'm sorry, I can't. It's just locked up. I'm full. Everybody says I need to go and do some kind of other page, like a celebrity page or some shit. And I'm not into that. So anyhow, I apologize. Um, I think we're going to ask 1500 plus the ride for this thing. It's a good solid two by eight and it's been completely reworked and it's got all the good boy, big boy parts in it. So 1500 bucks plus the ride. First one to call the number, shoot me a text, or has got cash in hand. Not, oh, hey, I'll take it and I'll pay you in three weeks. I, no. So whoever's got the cash in hand is who this has got to go to first. So 
gentlemen, on that note, I've got to run. I appreciate every single one of you guys. Big shout out to Siglent Excess Power, Bird and Coaxial Dynamics as always. Appreciate every single one of you gentlemen. Off and on to the next big project, whatever that's going to be. Man, what a whirlwind of a day. All right, guys. I'll see you. Bye-bye.